One of the things that the three of us are, uh, you know, spend a ton of our time on is how do we wake people up to this? How do we get people interested in this? AI plus military, it, 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 like people's eyebrows. Unlike humans, AI doesn't hesitate or question orders. It just acts. And we're building these systems without fully understanding how they'll behave in real world chaos. And the stakes couldn't be higher. So I see this just as an instance of like, we as a species are so precariously balanced with nuclear warfare that anything that could upset the table is extremely scary. And yes, AI could upset that table. Three dads Network. running three YouTube channels, working to wake up the world to AI risk. Tackle one missed warning shot each week. If it's Sunday, it's warning shots. All right, hello everybody. Welcome back to Warning Shots. I am John Sherman. I'm joined by the incredible Liron Shapira of Doom Debates, my friend Michael of the Lethal Intelligence channel on YouTube. Um, and we are here today to talk about a warning shot that is something that happened in the world of AI risk that should have been a big deal, but wasn't. The world just kept on moving. An interesting one this week. We are talking about the military application of AI and an article in Politico that was about a study at Stanford um, that talked about the tendencies that AI models have in uh, in military wargaming. So, Leron, like we always do, let's head to you, and if you can just kind of tee up for us <laughs> what this thing is. Uh, I'm not sure I got a good summary ready to go. Uh, let's see, I, Michael, I, you want to take a stab <laughs> at it? Michael, you got it? So, I mean, the Pentagon is in a high-stakes uh, race to integrate artificial intelligence into its weapon system and to keep up with the global uh, rivals like China and Russia. I mean, uh, you know, you're already in a, in a bit of a cold war. There's a multipolar world, and um, the tensions are at red level already, if it was the news. And, uh, you know, China's hypersonic uh, missiles and uh, Russia's cyber warfare capabilities are pushing the Pentagon to act fast. And there is not, it's not even a, a, an option. I mean, if you, if you don't integrate AI in your systems and you don't try to you know, minimize the response time on, on threat, you're just going to be outcompeted and then um, th that's a real problem. I thought, Michael, what was so interesting was when it gets into the potential for escalation and de-escalation. That was the thing that sort of first got my attention. And what's so weird about it is, is we're coming to learn that like these AI models are, have almost have like, personalities they have like they have like something that makes them unique they have like well, i don't know it's a worldview i don't know what it is it's like if you look at a schoolyard there's one kid who wants to go around and hug everybody and one kid who wants to go around and punch everybody and like the models are not unlike that to me in that there's sort of like these you know personal idiosyncrasies and so they did a bunch of testing with all the current models in wargaming and they found that they all hard escalate and never de-escalate when they're doing wargaming. So they go straight to nukes and they go straight to shooting wars and they'll give them like a hypothetical Ukraine, a hypothetical Israel situation, and they just go straight up, 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 up the chain, more weapons, worse weapons. Yeah, in a nuclear armed war, this, this could lead to Armageddon in minutes. So the Pentagon's AI is pushed to partly, it's about partly deterring rivals, but the speed and autonomy of these systems could outpace human decision-making. And unlike yeah. humans, AI doesn't hesitate or question orders. It just acts. And uh, we've seen how much it hallucinates and it makes mistakes. And we're building these systems without fully understanding how they'll behave in real world chaos. And the stakes couldn't be higher. So imagine a situation where an AI misjudging uh, could launch a, a nuke. It sounds like a movie, but the Pentagon's tech is bringing us closer to that reality. Um, yeah. And, and it's, and Liron, I think the thing that's interesting is, is like they're, they're all the models all the time escalate and don't de-escalate yeah that is an interesting trend you know it's not clear that it's going to be robust as the ais get smarter people in the article theorize that they're just seeing a lot of examples in the training data of like stories about escalation or training guides about escalation so this is kind of like an llm artifact in the future they'll be able to reflect on it and be like well let's let's try for peace so it's not a huge warning shot necessarily how they're behaving now but we still have the question of like okay where does the slippery slope lead and that's really the more fundamental question here it's like what's the game theory when everybody just has this ultimate nuclear system on their hands and nobody wants to be like the weakest one yeah and and so the article goes on to talk about the dead hand system which is basically like the nuclear missile system that if the command and control of your country gets disabled by say a, a first strike nuke you would by default 
automatically in an automated way launch all your nukes back at whoever launched them at you. And they're talking about basically how it seems probably impossible to not link that dead hand system to AI for speed and comp you know, competitive reasons if the other guys do. Uh, this all sounds really, really, really terrible. Yeah, so for perspective, the long-term AI doom doesn't even need nukes, right? So we could start an AI in the forest, naked, <laughs> in a data center, right, whatever, and it could, it could bootstrap its way to whatever weapons it needs. So adding nukes to the AI, it's like, oh, we're going to give the sharks lasers. You know, it's like, sure, that, that's like nice, that's sensationalist, and it might be a short-term threat. But there's this other angle, which is like, well, nukes are already extremely scary, right? The equilibrium that we have with nukes is already precarious. There's already been close calls like the Cold War. So it's possible that we never even get super intelligent AI. We just get semi-intelligent AI, which pushes us over the limit. You know, we get another Cuban Missile Crisis and we don't handle it perfectly this time. And that is definitely a shorter term bonus way to die. Uh, do you guys uh, remember this uh, tweet by Eliezer where he was saying why... Um, nuclear, why AI is much more dangerous than nukes. And he gave some uh, 10 funny reasons. So he was saying nuclear wars are, are not smarter than humanity. Nuclear wars are not self-replicating. They're not self-improving. They're easier to understand. So it was a, a very long, it's very funny tweet about, and, um, you know, also nukes are so easy to understand. People understand they're dangerous. AI, you know, most people don't even understand they're dangerous. So it's like 15 reasons why. Do you remember any of those reasons? I was, I was um, right yeah, yeah, yeah. Mind. No, totally. There, there's so many. I mean, I think the biggest reason is that nuclear weapons don't make you rich as you're building them. <laughs> yeah. And also, I mean, um, the materials and the factories for building nuclear weapons are relatively easy to, to spot. While, I mean, AI can basically be built in the future, it could be built in a, in a basement, you know, eventually when it becomes very energy efficient. And, uh, there's so many reasons. I mean, the venture-backed co companies uh, trying to scale privately, you know, the, the AI doesn't happen for nukes. Anyway. Listen, we're going to take a, just a moment of a mid-break show right here and talk about our attire for one second. We're all wearing fun and exciting things. I am wearing the Pink on Pink Ask Me About AI Risk shirt available <laughs> in the AI Risk Network store on this YouTube channel. Cool. Uh, Michael, tell us about what you're wearing. I mean, I, I knew the, the episode <laughs> would be about uh, AI warfare, so I just... Uh, uh, found, um, you know, um, my, my this, this is from uh, in Greece. We have a compulsory military service. I'm surprised it still fits. And uh, yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. Michael's so that ready for the two month, Michael... <laughs> the, the two the two month survival period. Once AI has taken down the major systems and it hasn't sent drones for everybody yet, Michael's ready to go. <laughs> that's right. You won't even see him in the forest. He'll be camouflaged. He'll just be this head yeah. walking around. Um, and Leron, of course, that's the only the thing I have. By the way, I don't have a. Any other gear. <laughs> I don't have an arrow or whatever. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. All right, so back to our topic. So I feel like I feel like military application of AI is something that the public is probably very wary of and concerned about. And it, you know, it like every movie's about it. Like this is this is this is not too hard to understand that this is like danger, danger, probably not a good idea. Uh but what what you know I find so interesting is that that like the systems show that they're sort of have these uh you know they're not the peacemaker and and Liron you're saying that in the future they could sort of train in some peacemaking uh potential into them but you know how does that work when they're all sort of in this testing and the war gaming they're all the bully they all just want to ratchet it up how how do they bake it you know bake it back down well in this particular case i don't actually see the ais as the more dangerous part i see the nukes as the more dangerous part you know, it's kind of like the shark laser scenario. It's like, well, if you already have lasers or you already have sharks, like the combination isn't that much more scary. So I see this just as an instance of like, we as a species are so precariously balanced with nuclear warfare that anything that could upset the table is extremely scary. And yes, AI could upset that table. But if you ask me about the order of operations, I think before we're dumb enough to let AI push the nuclear launch button, even before then, we're just going to be dumb enough to have AI recursively self-improve and just go kill us however it wants, whether it uses nukes or not. Mm. So you, you, you don't even think we get to the point where the military application becomes a problem? I mean, we definitely might. Don't, I mean, it is kind of a race, right? It's like, oh, which way will we die first? It's like a, it's a, it's a fun horse race to watch. 
Michael. Actually, I think in the short term, it might be actually uh, leading to less amount of casualties because where it's going to is uh, drones from one country maybe fighting against drones from another country. So it will be less amount of human, you know, meat soldiers, uh, you know, exchanging bullets with each other. So in the yeah. short term, let in the short term, let, uh, letting drones of automated systems fight each other might reduce human casualties by by keeping soldiers off the battlefield. But uh, this assumes tight control over the tech, which is risky. And as they as they kill kill chain targeting, so decisions, strikes, everything gets fully automated. Even the small even a, a small glitch could spiral into chaos. And it's actually it's gonna get really crazy. Uh, you know how, um, if, if you think about the evolution of warfare, we're getting close to this point where we get a, a bullet leaving your gun, then just flying, you know, with uh, traveling uh, with a f- phase recognition software as a drone, I mean, and then uh, finding the specific phase, just hitting that phase, like uh, landing on your forehead. So it's uh, it's just it's getting really crazy, really fast. And all this stuff uh, keeps getting evolving in, into... In real war situations, like um, in the war zone like Ukraine and elsewhere, where there's a lot of drones uh, going on, this might all sound uh, sci-fi, but it's fast evolving. And as drones get much cheaper, you can imagine them get, getting proliferated, and anyone could become a target at some point. Um, you know, you could be based on a profile um, or a tweet. Even you know, even your in your city, someone might, uh, someone crazy might launch a little drone. You know, uh, try to find you and uh, kill you, whatever. This will happen in the near future. That's a terrifying thought when you think about a bullet. You know, I, I guess it's it's not a sort of a the the traditional bullet that we'd have be a smart it's bullet a or something. But yeah. yeah, yeah, and it just finds it, it's it's it knows somebody's DNA or some sort of signature on their phone or whatever it is, and it's looking for that individual, and then it finds them and it kills them. Yeah. I mean, this this idea of kill chain targeting, everything gets automated. Decision making will be automated at some point. So you need to really f- act really fast. So you cannot have people in the yeah. loop. People are slow. And, they and might be hesitant. Liron, how can we have systems that are making their own kill decisions when we, they hallucinate and they're wrong and, and, you know, they're so imprecise? I have some faith that this is kind of the ordinary stage of testing, you know, like quality assurance for software. Yeah, there will be some accidental kills, you know, the same way there's like self-driving car crashes. I actually think that's a good analogy. It's like, yeah, there will be some tragedies, but ultimately we have a feedback loop, right? We have multiple chances to get it right. As long as you don't kill literally everybody, you can have your next version of the system be more robust. I don't consider this that great of a problem. In fact, as Michael said, we might even save lives and just have drones fight drones for a while, right? So that's not my concern. And I I do think it's important as we do our show and we point out all the different warning shots, we have to keep the perspective of like, which one's the one that's about human extinction, right? And and I would say we should file this under like, not human extinction threat, but maybe more like a just warfare and like surveillance, right? And like dictatorship balance of power threat, but that's different. Sure. And I think, you know, one of the things that the three of us are, uh, you know, spend a ton of our time on is how do we wake people up to this? How do we get people interested in this? How do we, you know, Michael, we were just talking about how the world is sleeping through this whole thing and, and nobody knows anything about it. And I yeah, think this, I is, mean, this is a this is a thing that, that wakes people, you know, AI plus military, it, 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 like people's eyebrows go up. But if you think about it, I mean, we're just literally building Skynet, you know, from the movie Terminator. Because we're, we're it's in closer and closer to this situation where, uh, I mean, you could literally press a button, you know, lay back and let it unfold and check after a few days. And let's say everyone in the city is gone. Literally everyone, it, you know, it gets hunted down and gone. And uh, similar to how we automate, let's say, a factory to produce something, to, that creates something. Now we're trying to automate this death factory that optimally creates the dev- devastation and destruction. And obviously a single error will unleash cascading destruction. These AI-driven yeah. tools operating faster than human oversight could misinterpret a signal, like a radar blip, or prioritize efficiency over ethics, whatever. It could launch attacks triggering unstoppable cross-border co- conflicts. Because if this uh, starts going, you cannot stop a war easily. You can look at history, World War II, etc. So with no humans in the loop, these machines could keep fighting, prioritizing their logic over our survival, and keep in mind, I mean, as Leon said about nukes, I mean, they can use, for them it's a tool because they don't care. So, in in the future, not now, but in the future, once it becomes really capable, it might decide that it can survive nuclear winter. 
I mean, a nuclear wither might be yeah. something yeah. Great, great for AI because it could, it could be like cooling down its servers. I mean, it doesn't matter for yeah. us. It's a devastating yeah. nuclear winter. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't care. Like if 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 everything is um, destroyed, why does it care? I mean, it could just uh, start uh, optimizing other stuff or start building other stuff. It doesn't mean it's not the same when humans try to surgically destroy things or do some operation in the war zone or whatever. Sure. And, and Liron, in a, in a sane world, in a world where the incentives were different and, and um, the incentives were not profit, but safety, protecting our kids, protecting our families, not ending the world, how would we approach the use of the military application of AI? So the obvious thing is what governments are already smart enough to realize, which is you don't just give the AI the nuclear launch codes. You have a human in the loop for the more critical stuff. But... If you have smaller weapons, I do actually think delegating to the AI when it gets good enough, it does make sense by analogy to solve driving. Yes, some accidental people will get killed, but there's always an accident rate. So I would actually classify part of this under the field of like, yeah, normal technological development, normal precision war optimization. So there is a very important dividing line. And ultimately, it's when things get existential that it's just like, okay, we can't handle AI when things get existential. But when they're not existential, yeah, it's in useful tool stage, right? There's that line. Yeah. Yeah. Viewers out there, let us know in the comments how you feel about the military application of AI and these questions of escalation, de-escalation. Uh, it is all fascinating stuff that I think we're going to be all thinking and talking about a lot because it is very important. Um, we are at time. Michael, you are in your army fatigues or your army camouflage. So you are, you've never been more appropriately dressed to end the show in our standard. <laughs> fashion with a little okay so since uh, we're talking automation i'm gonna do a drone a drone here what? so i'm just uh, using my playstation thing what? <laughs> excellent all right thank you gentlemen i'll see you next oh Liron, here we go <laughs> awesome see you guys next week